Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. The hits just keep coming. We know that, as I reported to you yesterday, our great and wonderful prelates, who are the real guardians of tradition, have decided to start sending delegations to groups of faithful traditional nuns for what are called apostolic visitations, which are little more than inspections by the modernists to see if these traditional enclaves of tradition are towing the modernist line or not. If they are not towing the line, they will be suppressed. That is what it means to be a guardian of tradition, after all, at least in the minds of Francis the Great Uniter and the prelates who think like him. Today we have a story about the laity of Guadalajara asking their bishop to reconsider his ban of the Latin Mass in his diocese since his edict that are reported on last week exceeds the mandate of Traditionis Custodis. So let's have a look at that, plus a call to prayer and works for the defense of tradition that are coming from a layman that is pertinent to what we're seeing in the church today. As always, a special thank you goes out to the patrons and channel members who make this work possible. So let's get into this. First, here's the letter of the lay faithful of Guadalajara to their bishop. It is their hope that they can convince him to dialogue with the FSSP that he basically suppressed, as he actually had promised before he then suppressed them without dialogue. We'll see how that goes. Here's the full text. Faithful Asked to be Heard by Cardinal Francisco Robles Ortega More than 150 families left in distress. In view of the decree issued by Cardinal Francisco Robles Ortega, in which he suppresses the quasi-parish of San Pedro and Cadenas in Guadalajara, Mexico, the parish, the parishioners who were once part of it are asking to be heard and for the mandate to be reversed. Without previous dialogue on the part of the Archdiocese with the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter, the FSSP, nor with the parishioners, the quasi-parish that had as its seat the Church of Our Lady of Pilar in the historic center of Guadalajara was eradicated, leaving the parishioners without a series of canonical rites and thus more than 150 families in distress who used to be part of it. The mandate was issued with the justification of putting into effect the modu proprio traditionis custodis guardians of tradition, issued by Pope Francis in July of this year, where he points out a list of measures to be implemented regarding the Eucharistic celebrations under the Roman Missal of 1962 and leaving the diocesan bishops the exclusive competence to authorize in their dioceses the use of that missal. It should be noted that nowhere in the pontifical document does it suggest or mandate the suppression of parishes or quasi-parishes already erected under the previous motu proprio Samorum Pontificum, issued by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, or before. For ex-parishioners who received the news with great surprise, this measure has the f forebodes an eventual extinction of the celebration of the Mass according to the Missal of St. John the Twenty-Third in the Archdiocese of Guadalajara, especially because, despite an announcement in a press conference last July by Cardinal Robles Ortega indicating he would first dialogue with the FSSP, there were no conversations on the subject prior to the declaration. The edict destroys the work of more than a decade of a devout and vibrant community, and leaves the faithful with the uncertainty of who will be responsible in the long term for the celebrations of the traditional Mass. Since it does not ratify the priests of the FSSP in their pastoral responsibility for the faithful with whom they have labored since 2009. This is unfortunate since the priests of the Society of Apostolic Life are experts in these celebrations and their charisma and reason for existing is to attend the parishioners who desire to attend so-called Tridentine Mass. Although the Eucharistic celebrations will continue, they will be limited to the existing ones without being able to celebrate Masses for weddings, funerals, or First Communions without seeking permission. Meanwhile, the document fails to specify it from such permissions must now be sought. In addition, they will only be able to be held in the Church of Our Lady of the Pilar, San Javier de los Colinas, in the chapel of Casa Cristo Rey, where the priests of the FSSP in Guadalajara are located. The parishioners are afraid of being left without the ancient rite that was used by the Catholic Church for more than 1,500 years, and that was changed to the so-called Novus Ordo after the Second Vatican Council. The worry stems from that fact that around the world, some bishops have eradicated these celebrations completely, such as in the Diocese of Alawahala, Costa Rica, where they suddenly canceled the only Latin Mass in the country and suspended the diocesan priest who celebrated it for deciding, in response, to celebrate the Novus Ordo in Latin. Despite these measures, which the parishioners point out as cruel and unjust, they have reaffirmed their unwavering fidelity and service to the Catholic Church 
and the successor of St. Peter, hoping to be heard by Cardinal Francisco de Ogles Ortega. Fruits In little more than twelve years that the FSSP has been in Guadalajara, many people have returned to the Catholic Church and to the practice of their faith thanks to their apostolic work. During this time, the community has given the church four priests, one religious sister, conversions and baptisms of non-Christian adults who are following an authentic spiritual growth. Parishioners participate in a variety of groups, catechesis and apostolic work, such as, such as feeding the poor, working in orphanages, evangelizing the street, conducting door-to-door -door missions, and attending to, to those physically in a less than ideal state at night, and when people come to them because their own priests can't be found. That's the end of the letter. It ends rather abruptly, ending on a note of positivity and telling that the fruits of the works of the FSSP have been in Guadalajara, and they've been numerous. I've heard elsewhere that they have helped ignite some vocations in Guadalajara, and that mass attendance has increased dramatically because of them, and most importantly, they've helped stem the tide of apostasy in that diocese, for as is well known to those paying attention, many sheep are leaving the church to follow our so-called separated brethren, and in so doing have embraced apostasy and schism for group-hug modernist Protestantism. The, that, that path is exploding right now in Mexico, and it's something that is not talked about enough by the church. The work that the FSSP have done there has borne great fruits in their part of Mexico, but it has now been swept away thanks to Paca Papa Francis's baleful wrath and, of course, the actions of the bishop there. Little is surprising these days on that front, though. And that brings me to this. A couple of weeks ago, I received a letter from a listener. It's pretty long, so I can't publish the full thing in a video form, and it does frankly touch on topics simply not allowed on this platform, but I have a couple excerpts here for you. As a preface, I'll say this. If you are tempted to despair, do not indulge in it. Our Lord chose each and every single one of us to be alive in this time in history for a reason. It is a cross to bear, knowing as much as we do about the state of things, and it should motivate you to deepen your prayer life. To pray for all involved, especially for our good priests, the better bishops, and yes, for traditional groups who do not adhere to the same opinions that we might have or that we are not part of ourselves, even if they do hold to positions we don't hold to in this time of de facto schism that has been led and instigated by Francis the Great Uniter. So please, deepen your prayer life as your best measure to hold fast to the faith. If you don't pray your rosary daily, start doing so and start doing so today. If you're not wearing the brown scapular, get enrolled and pray the preconciliar little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Keep some other devotion too if you can. These things are essential. In other words, seek sanctity, which is the best thumb in the eye to the modernist that you as a layperson can give. Now, the, lay, the letter here I have begins with describing the suppression of some traditional Latin masses in Chicago by Cardinal Supich and the consequences of that. And then we get this, quote, When I first heard about His Eminence's letter and read it, I was deeply saddened. What he is suggesting is that he terminates the Latin mass community I go to and where I serve as an acolyte and thoroughfare and decides to transfer us to the smaller neighboring FSSP parish. Now, I like that little church that he's sending us to. In fact, it is very sentimental to me, as it was where I first got to visit and pray the Latin Mass two years ago. But his decision was not very realistic in my opinion, nor is it prudent. The parish is smaller in size as ours, and most of their Masses are packed already. Not only that, there is a fire hazard in the church as a result of the crowded space. This decision is not only a danger to us, but also a danger to everyone in the neighboring parish. Indeed, the language of one of the parish council members is that this gesture was harshly dismissive. Not long before that, we see that the Novus Ordo Archbishop of Chicago abrogated the Leonin prayers, the Ave Maria and the invocation of the St. Michael prayer at the end of the Mass, from being said out loud at the conclusion of the Mass. As a note, this is said at the conclusion of low Masses. And this all it succeeds not only Traditionis Custodis, but also Bergoglio's recent heretical and blasphemous assertion that the Ten Commandments are not absolutes. We are witnessing the infiltration and mess of the Church unfolding to such an extent that the entire Catholic world has and is feeling the effects of this mess. And the strangest thing is that I am not surprised. We have been warned about this multiple times throughout the ages. From a biblical standpoint, this is something that is to be expected. Our Lord has said in sacred scripture that we would be hated for his sake. See the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 22. And how troublesome the times will be when the end of the era comes around, and how dreadful and just his judgment shall be over all, since it will be upon all to which this judgment befalls. 
saint. See the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, chapters 24 to 25. And even when we factor in the modern prophets and the apparitions of our Heavenly Mother, her Divine Son's warnings only become more clear, and indeed more vivid. Our Lady of Good Success foretold the evils of the stonecutters. She said again at La Salette that Rome would be usurped by the Antichrist and that the Church would be an eclipse. She foretold in the Third Secret of Fatima, as per the insinuations of Sister Lucia, the testimonies of Fathers Gomar de Pau and Malachi Martin and Cardinals Chiappi and Odi, and various alleged texts of the secret itself, that the great apostasy would begin at the top, end quote. The listener, young man discerning the priesthood, goes on to describe some aspects of Catholic prophecy that I've covered elsewhere, and the call to truly unite the clans, which is especially pertinent now that there is a big meeting this weekend under that banner. You probably heard about it, and I support it. But, of course, my take has always been that if there is any authenticity to, call, to the call to unite the clans, then it must come with an invitation to the traditional groups that are, to borrow a phrase from Francis the Great Uniter, that it must include traditional groups that are on the peripheries. And it does not at present, which is why I've never associated myself really with that phrase, nor with the recognize and resist position, strictly speaking. But after all of that, the listener says this, quote, we are called as the children and faithful of the Catholic Church to defend the same church and her teachings and traditions not out of our own vainglory or personal conviction, but out of our longing and affection for her divine spouse. We must fulfill our state of life and fulfill our Lord and Lady's requests, the first Saturday devotion, the daily rosary, frequenting in Holy Communion, going to receive the sacrament of penance weekly at best and monthly at least, the morning offering prayer of the brown scapular, the Angelus, etc., we must strengthen each other with our prayers, that we may save our souls, and that if we are to witness these great events in our lives, we must be prepared, prepared to die in a state of sanctifying grace in the name of God and within the embrace of Holy Mother Church. End quote. He goes on to say we must pray for our good and faithful priests and bishops, and he includes bishops associated with set of a contism on one end of the traditional spectrum, to Father Altman on the opposite end, as well as Vigano, Bishop Athanasius from Kazakhstan, and pretty much any of the better bishops and priests you can name in between. And that brings me to this. When this happens in your diocese, when your Latin Mass is suppressed, what will you do? Will you migrate over to the SSPX, or will you heed the words of internal adversaries of sacred tradition and think they're forbidden and wicked evil types? Be wary in our times to, to, of those who seek to keep you from attaining the sacraments from good and faithful priests, for they speak often with forked tongues. And no, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, for there are far too many voices like that whose message is essentially that we just need to Vatican II and Novus Ordo harder for it all to work well. They have fundamentally, at the end of the day, the same message as Francis and the ape of the church, regardless of who they are or what group they're with. And in these times, our Lord calls us to be as wise as serpents. So discern carefully in these times, for our souls are what is at stake, because these people are, at the end of the day, tinkering with the faith itself. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Please keep the Lady of Guadalajara in your prayers, as well as the FSSP priests there who are functionally and now have little purpose while that edict stands. I expect that it will stand because this was never about uniting the church or dialogue. It was always about defending the remaking of the church at and after the council. And these groups remind people what the faith was like in better times. And we can't just have that now, can we? But keep all involved in your prayers, for prayer is a far more powerful means of addressing such situations than any of us really give it credit for. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.